is there. So, thank you. So, good afternoon, and uh, we are a team of two members, and uh, we are students uh, from the Faculty of Information Technology, and we would like to present uh, a, our presentation about uh, verifying the feasibility of mass replacement of traditional building materials with drone resources. So, um, the main motivation for this work is uh, the fact that uh, production of conventional materials such as stone, uh, cement and other conventional materials uh, leaves high carbon footprint and it produces a lot of uh, CO2 and uh, due to energy intensive uh, gathering and uh, processing. And to minimize uh, this footprint, uh, we have to look for alternative options and a promising candidate, promising candidates are renewable growing materials. Uh, so, uh, we export uh, the most uh, popular ones, uh, such as uh, wood, that is uh, a renewable resource uh, and is widely used in construction for its strength, durability, aesthetics, apparel. Uh, it can be used in a variety of uh, building products, such as lumber, plywood, and engineered wood products. Uh, the bamboo, one of the, the most fast-growing uh, grass uh, that can be harvested every few years and making it highly renewable resource. Uh, and um, straw bales, uh, that is a really low-costing building uh, material. And they're used in construction for walls, roofs and um, insulation. A hemp, uh, that is also a fast-growing material. As it uh, is uh, s uh, a substitute for traditional building materials such as concrete and plaster, and the cork uh, that can be used in construction for flooring, insulation as well, and as a soundproofing material. So uh, the following table uh, presents the comparison between conventional and renewable resources, uh, materials, and uh, and the possible applications. So for wood and bamboo, uh, they are the counterpart for steel or concrete, and uh, they can be used for structural components. Uh, and then we have straw bales, hemp and cork, which are uh, which can be used uh, f as insulation materials, and they can replace them. Uh, and uh, uh, moreover, hemp can be used uh, as a res replacement for uh, pl plaster. And uh, we can also. Uh, Apply. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And we can use cork as uh, soundproofing material as well. And the next table uh, illustrates uh, seven different materials and. Uh, the first two are conventional materials, uh, the steel and concrete, uh, and we can observe that they're pretty expensive if you compare them uh, to uh, renewable materials, and they aren't really sustainable, and they leave high uh, carbon footprint. And in contrast, uh, renewable resources are cheaper, uh, they're much more sustainable, and they have uh, a pretty low carbon footprint. And uh, also, uh, talking about this uh, 
materials, uh, wood products can also store carbon over their lifetime. Uh, that is uh, also really uh, useful uh, for our goals. And uh, bamboo, uh, for example, also can sequester more carbon than most other plants. And straw bales have an embodied carbon footprint uh, of just um, uh, less than five uh, kilograms CO2 per uh, meter. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the hemp uh, uh, is uh, also, uh, su such as cork, is uh, uh, good for carbon f footprint. Uh, and yeah, and um, also the, uh, one of goals of our uh, research was to uh, think about uh, metrics, uh, how to uh, measure, uh, uh, how to measure how these materials are good uh, for environmental, and um, we uh, thought about uh, some KPIs. Uh, such as embodied energy uh, that represents the amount of energy consumed during the production of materials, including extraction, processing, transportation, and assembling. Uh, global warming potential. Uh, this measure of the total energy uh, greenhouse gas has to warm to the Earth over a specific period, usually like uh, 100 years. The life cycle assessment. Uh, this analysis of materials environmental impacts through its life cycle, from raw material uh, extraction through material processing, manufacturing, distribution, use, uh, disposal, and carbon sequestration uh, potential, as we talked uh, before, and the ability of material to capture and store carbon dioxide during its growth of production. So. Uh, this uh, score is just a uh, mean of uh, all of these uh, metrics. And um, the main contribution of our work uh, is uh, the following uh, method uh, or metric, which uh, can be used uh, to evaluate commercial potential of uh, renewable resource uh, material. And it's uh, basically a weighted sum of uh, five different metrics uh, uh, with uh, their own coefficients. Uh, and those metrics are sustainability score, production potential, availability and local sourcing, market demand, and cost uh, competitiveness. And uh, those metrics are pretty self-explaining, so yeah. That's it. And uh, this table represents our uh, calculation of, uh, we have selected uh, weights for each of these metrics and assigned um, a score to each one and calculated uh, the resulting uh, commercial potential score which uh, tells us that wood is, uh, seems to be the best material uh, among others. And we would, uh, we would like to outline wood and straw bales since uh, wood can be used as a structural component and straw bales uh, can be used as uh, insulation material. And so yeah, and this metric, yeah. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you very much. I open the floor for questions, and first of all, of course, for Deck. So uh, these values were empirically uh, calculated uh, by using uh, the researches uh, we found on the internet. Yeah, we have a small attachment of uh, the research with uh, some calculations, and uh, uh, these are like 
the goal was to show the metric and uh, it's also um, like uh, adaptable to changes and uh, this weights also can be uh, changed as well because this metric is normalized so um, yeah we, we, we are like uh, we are from a uh, little bit another area and try like to uh, more calculate something but not uh, uh, the experts in this field. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. We don't have much uh, domain knowledge, so we were just using like existing data that we could find. And we didn't find like m much data, but uh, from what we have found, we have estimated uh, such results. Any other questions, remarks? Maybe some colleagues from uh, civil engineering who can comment this work. Uh, I have a question. I, I am an architect, so I'm really terrible with, with formulas, right? Um, but when you showed your sustainability index, if you can show that, uh, you present it as an average of four numbers. But these four numbers have different units. So how is it possible that you can uh, actually make this formula like this, like an average of four things that have completely different uh, units? Yeah, um, we assume that uh, all those uh, metrics are normalized. So they're in, in the interval from 0 to 1. And the resulting uh, value is Yeah, so, yeah, uh, so, so for example, the highest uh, value should be like uh, state of the art uh, uh, material, for example, and uh, uh, that one that is uh, like it's also should be uh, calculated empirically. But yeah, they they have the same values, and then we can uh, like. But if they are normalized, then the biggest value can never be higher than 1, right? Then you, uh, your s will always be between 0 and 1. Yeah, and but I see values yeah. all, all bigger than 1. Yeah, and we, we just later rescale it to the interval from 1 to 5, so it's more representable. Nobody likes like mm. floating numbers, so those are integers, or almost integers. Okay. But yeah, then that should be in the formula, right? Because, uh, yeah. Otherwise, it no, raises even questions from me as an architect. That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions or remarks from the audience? Colleagues, perhaps? If not, then thank you very much for your presentation.